Are you living for God or for yourself? Are you living for God or for yourself, guys? Proclaiming that you believe in God and you go to church and, and throwing God in in your life like some light seasoning is not is not in any way a witness to say that you are living for God. You know, my brothers and sisters, there's going to come a time in our life where we're going to stand before the throne and the books are going to be opened up, opened up to give an account for all that we have done, everything that we have done. There's a lot of people, if you ask anybody nowadays, just about anybody who's a Christian, and you find that there are people, they say that they're Christians, we're good people, we don't get in any trouble, we give to the poor, all these different things, but then you will find in their life, they live mostly for themselves. They feel like God just wants them to be happy, to live well, and God is just content with their very existence and that they're good people. We don't bother anybody. We're good people. And that's all that God calls for us. But the word of God says, Jesus says, you are to pick up your cross and follow me daily. As a matter of fact, there was a rich man that he said to him, go and sell everything that you have and follow me. You know, this was a, the rich young ruler. He had been following the Ten Commandments all these good things, but his heart was attached to his riches. Now, God may not necessarily tell every person, it's not saying that every person who's rich or who's doing well, you're supposed to sell everything and follow Jesus. But you see, this thing caused him to turn away from God. So the Lord was like, are you willing to let go, let go of that thing and those things that 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 gives your heart pause, that causes you to say, God, I can't completely commit because here's this thing that still holds my heart. Here is this thing that still holds on to the strings of my heart, you see? So for the rich young ruler, it was his money. So the bottom line I'm trying to say is there are a lot of people who feel just by the merit of their existence and that they're doing good in life, that is all the Lord wants them to do. But there are just certain things in their life they're not willing to give up for the Lord. And when you look at their platforms, there's a lot of people that say that they are believers and Christians. But when you look on their Instagram page or if you look at their um whatever platform they're on, it's all about them. Their Facebook page is all about them. Their Instagram page, it's all about them. You know, whatever it is, Snapchat, it's all them. They're just all over it. They may be some light seasonings of the Lord on there somewhere, you know, Christmas, holidays, or they will say, God is so good. You know, these messages, but you'll find most of the times they're living for themselves. There's a lot of people that's going to be really disappointed in the end because they believe if they lived good and they just did some charity work and everything and they didn't really bother anyone that they are going to go into heaven. But you'll find that a lot of them have not picked up their cross and followed Jesus. They don't want to pick up their cross and follow Jesus. There's something in their life, just as the rich, the rich ruler he was doing a lot of good things. He was following the Ten Commandments. He was doing these things. He was successful. He was doing well. But there was an area in his life that was like, ah, no, I'm not going to give this up for God. This could be a relationship. This could be just having a hateful heart. This could be, you know what, God, I'm a good person. There's a lot of people that are really nice and really kind, but they're racist. They're really people that's people that they're given to a lot of charity and stuff like that, but they are sexist. They have stereotypes. There are a lot of people that's doing a lot of good things, a lot of pastors that's out there doing good things, but they don't want certain types of people in their staff. They don't want women doing certain things in the church. There are some, some people, they, they're women who are in churches. They don't want any men to be in leadership roles, but they're doing a lot of great things within the community. And then guys, getting back to my point, there's a lot of people that's just living for themselves. It is all about them. God did not create us to just come on this earth and live life, popping bottles, just having a good time. And that's it. We all have a role. We all have something that we are supposed to be doing. And so what happens is you find people, they are very wealthy. And then what they're doing is every, they have a platform in which they are, you have to ask yourself when you have a platform and it's always about you and your family and what you're doing and your trips and where you're going next and blah, 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 blah. How is it that you think to post yourself so much, but not God? 
How do you think to post so much about you when it's not God? And people love for God bless me with this. Don't try to put God on there like some 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 saffron seasoning real quick. It's about you. And you know another thing, there's a lot of people, let me tell you something. A kind of pet peeve of mine, all right? When I see people always talking about all praises to God and there's this big old picture of them all the time. Now, granted, there's nothing wrong with you having a picture of yourself or anything like that. But I'm talking about, I've seen this on Facebook a lot. I'm not on Facebook like that anymore. But when I was, <laughs> these individuals would be, you know, this is the day that the Lord have made. But it's some big picture of them posing up and, you know, got the little lips Mm, like that it's a picture of them they're looking off you know with that pointer finger with a ring on it you know their pointing finger got the ring on it or you know they're wearing their baseball cap with a extra wide brim or you know wearing some cute outfit and you know i will say of the lord he's my refuge come on son get out of here you trying to be seen admit it <laughs> So, a lot of times there's a lot of self involved, guys, and we got to be careful. And so, the question is, how do you think to post yourself every day? How do you think to just post all your trips and all that stuff, but you are not thinking about God who's giving you that stuff? And then you put God in some tiny things. Guys, it's the same thing when you see people. There are these flyers with people, there's a conference. Do you remember, like, maybe in the old days? When people had, um, when there was a conference, you saw the cross, you saw if there was going to be a revival, it was a big old cross, you saw the dove. Now, when you look at flyers, who do you see? The speaker. There's all this fire in the background and the flames of graphics. You see them standing there looking like, you know, some, uh, <laughs> dude, it looks a lot like. You know, I used to party a lot and went to the club a lot. And I, I just remember the flies that used to be shown when, like, you know, a rap group is coming or, you know, some sort of entertainer is coming to, cl coming to town and their concert. You know how those things are. You know how they have it. The way they set up the flyers or, you know, the, the banners of this group that's coming to town, this rap group, whatever, this R&B group. And so you find that the, the it's so amazing that these days, even when people that's coming to, they're going to preach or teach there, everything is about them. And you might see this itty bitty cross somewhere way in the background, but you see them up front with their mohawks and different color hair and, you know, glasses and posing with the jeans with the chains hanging off. And then you see this little, you know, six font, the small little thing of the cross somewhere in the back Jesus Christ is Lord you know in about an eight font on the bottom but you see their names just big and so guys these are things that we have to look at here and and see who's on the throne who's truly on the throne are we really living for God or are we are we walking in plagiarism well, you're using all of God's materials. You're talking about God. You're getting all types of credits and stuff for the way you're speaking and the way you're prophesying and the great things you're doing and the conferences and the books that you've written. Yeah, God is on there, but he's not in your heart and you're really not serving him. So guys, we have to be very, very careful. It is about picking up our cross daily, daily and following the Lord, doing the things that he has called us to do. You know, guys, I'm going to... Say this real quick. When Jesus gave the parable about the, the 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 men who had, they each had, they all were given a certain amount of talents. And the master went off on a long trip and he came back. And the two, the one that had the three and the five, they were able to give back to the master and say, this is what I've done. But the one who had the tan talent, he had excuses. And you see, there's a lot of people, God has given every last human has something that they're supposed to be doing. And they can choose to take their gifts and their abilities to make riches for themselves. They can choose to use the gifts and their abilities to get attention 
and you know they may be using it but now it's all about them because the lord the master delays his coming so they're you know they're kind of doing whatever they feel like doing okay they have the they may be utilizing things but they've become like lucifer that thinks that they are going to build themselves above the stars in the throne of god even though they'll never admit it but their actions says exactly that so guys what i'm trying to tell you is god has given each and every one of us a, a, a thing to do. And so you're going to find that people are going to stand before the throne of God. And there's going to be those who you have done the things that God has called you to do. And you're able to present it to the Lord and say, father, this is what I've done. And I believe at that time, the Lord is going to show you the things that the harvest in your harvest as a result of your obedience. Those of you, you may have one or two things that you're doing right now. And it may seem like, you know, I don't know if I'm really doing much of anything. You feel like you just reached a few. All I had was, you know, a few people, a small group. But God, at that point, when you stand before the throne, you're going to see how your obedience work was perpetuating and all the lives that you change. You're going to be surprised through the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to see how your obedience did so much. And the same thing with those of you, you know, that's doing a five. I believe that's what's going to be. Remember when they went to God, when the, when the master came back, the one who had five was like, here, I have 10. The one who had three was here to show, I believe he had double that. And so I believe what's going to happen, the flip side of it is you're not going to be like, oh, Lord, look at what I did. When we when we come to the Lord and when the books are opened up at that point in our lives and when we're walking in obedience and we're taking up our cross and following him and we're doing the things that he's told us to do, when we have denied ourselves and we're following Jesus and he and we're going to him and standing before him, we're going to see how our obedience actually affected the harvest we're going to see the 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 we're going to see the double and the triple and the exponential amount of fruit that we produce in being obedient to the lord and so you're going to have those that we're going to call them the one talent group their one talent was self they had that they had their one gift and they buried that gift and what they did was they just kept it safe they kept that gift and talent safe but what they focused on was themselves because that's really what the the this is really what that the foolish servant did he focused on himself because everything when the he stood before the master that came back all he's talking about is well what he thought i i i know that and i know and and i i i but here you go i've kept it safe there's a lot of people who feels like god is going to be pleased that they lived a good life and that they did some you know that they were rich and and they did they built a couple of schools and they kissed the a, a few babies you know in 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 the poor countries and they're gonna think that's enough they're going to think that they are enough, that God is just going to be pleased when they stand before God like, da -da, surprise, look at me, look at me, hey. they think that they're going to stand before the Lord and he's going to be like, oh, you're so cute, you did so good. Mm -mm. They would have hidden the talent, they would have sat on the gifts that the Lord gave them, okay, and doing what they want to do, and they feel like, I'm the present. Look, look what I did for me and threw you in there somewhere. And you're going to find out that all along they hid, they, oh my God. You're going to find what they did. They buried obedience. The one thing that they were supposed to do, they buried submission and they buried obedience. And what they did is they allowed themselves to shine, to do things their way. And so when the, they stand before the Lord, they're going to be having all these excuses. But you see, I, I, I still talked about you here or there, Lord. Here you go. You've done nothing. You have not done the work. You have not done what the Lord has told you to do. We're not here to live for ourselves, guys. We are not here to floss. We are not here to be, you know, popping bottles and, you know, dusting our shoulders off and doing all these things. 
The word of God says we are supposed to deny ourselves and follow him daily, pick up our cross and follow him. And so there's a lot of people that's living their life how they want to. They have customized their salvation. They have decided how they're going to serve God in what capacity to, and to what degree and to what demographic they're going to serve him. So they're not picking up their cross to follow Jesus. They're like, this is how I want it, Lord. And they're not going to deviate to the left or to the right. And then a lot of times, as I said, you're going to see how much God is on their heart by how much he's on their Instagram, how much he's on their Snapchat. How much do you see God on their, on their, on their platforms? But they will swear to you up and down. I go to church and I believe in God and they will tell you, I don't have to, I don't have to be putting a bunch of things about God to believe in God. Well, do you have to be posting a lot of things about yourself for us to believe that you're living well? Come on. So, and this is not a hate thing, but it's just a reality thing, guys. There's a lot of people that's just living this way. It's very selfish. And in addition, as I said, even on these channels and platforms that you're on, even if you're talking about the Lord, make sure you're not committing plagiarism. Make sure that, you know, the crowd and the people are not getting to your head. The lights and whatever is not getting to your head. And you're just simply talking about God, but your heart is far away from him. And I'm here to tell you before any of us fall away from God, before our heart gets far from him, we hear him warning us. We hear him telling us, hey, you're going too far. We hear him saying, nope, don't do that. Don't talk about that. Nope, change that. Don't put that on. Nope, don't, don't do a video with that on. All of those things we hear. But if we disobey him, if we do what we want to do, you won't hear him anymore. You'll start to hear another spirit that's going to tell you that you're doing the right thing because you've created a gulf and a separation between you and the father. My brothers and sisters, the time are extremely dark. There is a great deal of deception out there. And the only way you're going to keep yourself from being deceived is to stay in the light, to stay in the light of Christ. The word of God talks about there's a light that is in fact darkness. I'm trying to tell you, if you think you find yourself or you are more prone to, to tickle your flesh and to do things that are fleshy and you find yourself behind closed doors when that camera goes off, you're struggling with different things. Some of you, it's just in my heart, stop playing these games, calling yourself ministering to people after hours, after dark, chatting and whatever, saying you're doing stuff for God. You already know this particular situation that you're dealing with. Some of you YouTube creators and those of you that are in certain positions when you're dealing with the people, you know that this conversation, you know that the situation is taking an ungodly turn, but you're still trying to play around with it. And I'm here to tell you the enemy will shame you. He's going to shame you in the end. If you're on an open platform and behind closed doors, you're playing these little games, he will shame you by bringing this thing public. You're going to find yourself having to come up front to the, to the world and saying that you're sorry. You're going to find yourself having to repent before the people but I'm here to tell you you are going to lose your anointing you are going to lose your anointing so you need to stop what you're doing right now I don't know who it is I see a woman a female and actually I see the person very clearly those little emails and those little chats and those conversations, the things that you're engaging in right now, you're going too far with it. And God has already spoken to your spirit and told you not to do it. And you're still doing it. You're flirting with this man. You have an attraction to this man. And you feel the Lord telling you, don't do this. But you're still playing with it. And you're going to be ashamed if you don't stop while you can you're going to find yourself repenting before people because this man is taking an opportunity to shame you, to take all your conversations and publicize it, to take all your conversations and post it in a public setting. So please stop doing what, stop doing what you're doing because it's not going to stay a secret. 
All right, guys, that's all I have. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, even the sister in particular, oh my God. I pray, oh God, that she will get herself, Father, before you. Run to you, oh God. Let her not be pulled out by the enemy. Father, we know the enemy will try to set things up in a way and put it in our minds that it's okay to go this route, Lord. Father, let her not be fooled by anything that this could be her, her godly husband. Let her not be fooled by thinking that she is trying to help this brother when she is not, Lord. Father, let any of my brothers and sisters in the Lord that are in this arena, if any of this is going on in their lives, I pray in the name of Jesus that God, they will stop. They will stop while they are hearing you. Father, we close the mouth of the line right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, that wisdom and understanding and discernment will be at the forefront of their hearts. Father, that they will not be driven by their own lusts, oh God, and brought to shame. Father, let us realize, God, it is all about you and no one else. In the name of Jesus, let us realize that every platform we're on, oh God, it's to bring glory and honor to you, oh God, and not to ourselves. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, that we're not living for ourselves, oh God. While, Lord, it's okay to share our lives, Father, let us realize that there is a balance. And Father, if we are more inclined to show our flesh and ourself and our life more than you, Father, we are out. We're out of sync with you. Oh, God, I just give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. It's even in my spirit right now to talk to somebody. Be careful how much you're posting. Be careful how much you're posting about your life and your business and what you bought. Because you're going you're gonna to cause a pestilence to come to your door. Some of you, every time you get something, people got to know you got some new shoes, you got a new car, you got a new new this. People are all up and through your house. I'm here to tell you they're very dangerous, dangerous people in this world. And not that you're going to live in fear, but I'm telling you, hallelujah, the Lord is showing me. Remember what happened to King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah, Israel ended up being taken captive by the Babylonians because Hezekiah opened up the palace and showed the princes of Babylon everything he had in his house. And he was just, they came to check on him. They brought him gifts because he had been sick. And he opened up his house and showed everything that was in there. Nothing was not shown to them. He took them to the stables. He took them everywhere and God was displeased. And I'm here to tell you that some of you, you're doing that. You're doing a lot of showing off. Talking about God has blessed you, but you're not thinking about God. You want people to see what you have. Stop letting the world in on your happiness. It is a dangerous place. You think you're safe because you're online, but you're more vulnerable than ever. You think you're safe because, oh, you're just doing this from your house, but you're showing people what's inside. You are making what is the most, most sacred and safest place. It's just open to the world. And these videos are going all over the world. You're going to bring the pestilence to your door. Dangerous, jealous people. Be careful. Be careful. This word is not for everybody. But perhaps whoever it's for, you're going to know who it's for. Because perhaps the Lord's been telling you, stop doing that. You may have been even been hearing it through your loved ones or someone close to you. Asking, why do you always put everything? Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Father, I just thank you for covering us. Let us walk in your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding. Father, let us not ever believe that we are safe in the safe haven of the internet, Lord. So God, we just thank you, Lord God, in all things we're having wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And Father, let us acknowledge you in all your ways, God, so you will direct our paths. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.